Hello everybody and welcome back. <clears throat> we are back with some more Ring of Pain and today is very exciting as we are going to zip that up real quick. We are going to be going over some of the basics for new players that are entering the Ring of Pain. Now Ring of Pain in general is like many ro roguelikes very unforgiving to start um, and if you haven't played a roguelike in the, roguelike in the past it can be uh, definitely discouraging at first when you don't really know what's going on you're not sure what you know how all the uh, rooms work and how the items work and how to get more items um, so we're gonna get into as much of that as we can without making a three-hour video uh, but one thing I do want to preface is just bear with me I'm not great at this whole editing and, um, you know, like clipping and trimming and all that. So I'm going to try and make this as clear and concise as possible. Uh, but, you know, just, just give, me, uh, give me a chance to, to do that for you. And leave your comments down below um, as far as some feedback or suggestions to make the video easier to watch. So uh, I'll be back in just a minute and we'll get right into it. Alright, so we are here with our achievement list. Okay, that's the first thing I want to talk about. So, um, it's kind of weird to jump right into a beginner's video and talk about achievements, but achievements in this game are huge. Um, as you can see here, I've got 76 of 84 achievements unlocked. Um, and I've got all of the achievements uh, that have items attached to them, as you can see on the right side of the scroll here. Um, and it may not really seem like it because they're kind of few and far between uh, but in total you can unlock um, I actually got it written down here you can unlock 46 items through achievements some of these items are the best items in the game um, especially once you get into the harder difficulties especially once you get to the end of the dungeon I mean just look how many items are over here Thunderstep we grab that all the time Gluttony is one of the best defensive items, um, even into the late game. Screamer is my top pick for a golden weapon. Um, so there's just there there needs to be an emphasis from the start to take a look at some of these achievements um, and and make them your goal, make them your uh, you know your 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 temporary objective to to complete some of these because they're really not all that difficult. Like for instance. This right here, Soul Hourglass, is one of the strongest items, late game items in the game. Um, and all you need to do is play the game. You literally just need to play. Uh, so there's a lot of items like that. Um, right up at the top here, we got a good, a good list of them. Die 25 times. Easy. Especially when you're starting out new. Fairy is amazing. Heal 5 on dungeon exit. Um, another one, Fractal. Uh, when you're first starting out, you're not going to be worrying about building clarity, so... This curse resistance isn't a big deal because you kind of avoid curse just to start with, but it gives great base stats. Um, so, you know, this is definitely nothing to scoff at. Uh, for a new player, the very first thing I would tell them is look at your achievements, see what you need to do, and start going for some of them. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have a little locked symbol here, so you won't be able to see what items there are, um, but it's just worth to unlock them all. Uh, because really, all of these items, I mean, if we were to weigh out the good versus the, the, the not so great that you get from this list, what did I say, 46 items? I would say 85% of them I use regularly. So this is, you, you can't let, overlook this, and that's what I wanted to, just wanted to go over first. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go over is the actual items themselves. Um, so as you can see at the top here, we've got our slot selection, which we have on all, and we also have rarity. So there's four different rarities, which have different um, availability throughout the course of the dungeon. Um, and then we have different slots, which you can actually sort by here, which is super convenient. Um, we're not going to go over every single one super in-depth, but there are definitely some that I really want to touch on. Um, and kind of just set a, a foundation um, for the next couple parts of the video. So, uh, the first thing to understand is the rarity. So, um, your, your whites are going to be the first items that you start out with, right? Your common. Uh, 
uh, your rares are your blues. You'll start seeing them in sometimes in the early game, usually into the mid game. Uh, your purples are your epics, so those are going to start showing up, um, you know, around dungeon level 10 ish, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe eight, depending on how lucky you get. Um, and then your golds, <coughs> excuse me, are your late game, you know, heavy effect, big ticket items that show up towards the end of the uh, of the dungeon, usually after round 10. Uh, you can find them earlier, especially if you're going to an ambush or something, but that's just kind of the basics, the basics of how these rarities work. Um, these first three items that you can see here, Dark Stone, Candle, and Double Candle, are your different difficulties. And for all intents and purposes right now, all you need to worry about is Candle, uh, which is having a 20% 20, uh, 20 stealth chance and one clarity. You will get this every single time you start the dungeon. So this is, you know, this is kind of your, your base for the, uh, for the dungeon. So um, what I want to go over here um, is a couple of different types of equipment uh, that are really, really crucial that you can't overlook. So if we could just kind of scroll through here. Um, your helmets, I mean, helmets are just, it's part of your base equipment, right? Some of them have some effects that are, you know, definitely helpful. Um, but your helmets are, you know, they're just part of your, your full build out. Same with chest plates. Uh, chest plates are a large, um, you know, area of effects that you're going to be definitely looking to prioritize on. Whether that be healing like here, you get extra damage with the onion suit. Um, chest plates are usually defensive based. Um, and sometimes they'll have uh, like very minor offensive capabilities like reflecting damage or something of that nature. Um, but again, just a normal normal slot. Same with gloves, very generic. Um, you know, you want to fill all these slots, but there's not, you know, you're just going to kind of pick these up as you go. The different effects that they have, you can read through them here, um, you know, are I don't want to get too much into those because I don't want to waste too much time, um, but you can kind of read them, uh, and most of them are relatively intuitive. Um, if it sounds good, try it out. It might be. It all depends on your playstyle too, which we'll get into. Pants, another defensive um, slot. For the most part, you get a little bit of offense with some of these, which is nice. Uh, typically, you get a fair amount of clarity on some of these pieces, especially with the Skirt of Visions. Um, but they also have some, you know, good early game options here, like the 5% parry, the plus one on health, uh, from potions, stuff like that. Boots. Uh, I would say this is the first section that is relatively important for the early game. So, if we take a look at our first five pairs of boots here, so slipper, rainbow socks, boots, lucky shoes, and sandals. Um, you'll notice they all come with fairly decent stats, with the exception of slippers. We're going to kind of leave that one alone for now, because that's more of an advanced item. Uh, even though it's white, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to manage um, clarity as a new player. But if you look at these first four, you get attack and speed and health with this. You get health and speed with that. Uh, with the sandals, you get two HP on these lucky shoes and some clarity. Um, and you get defense plus a freeze effect on these boots. So boots are really important especially as, you know, potentially one of your first pickups that you're going to run into. I personally like picking up rainbow socks or sandals um, the most if I'm, if I'm given the option in the early game. Uh, as far as just the boot, just the boot slot, if I'm forced to take a boot slot. Uh, and that's mostly because I prioritize uh, out of these two items, the attack, the HP, and for the sandals, mainly the HP because it gives you two stats there. Uh, but also sometimes some early speed isn't bad either. Um, but that's about it for our boots. Boots don't typically have too crazy of effects. Uh, excuse me, until you get into some of the later items here, like Thunderstep or Ascension. Um, but for the most part, that's what you're going to be looking at for your starting boots. Um, shields. Shields are very, very in-depth. They do a lot of different things. They're obviously mostly defensive. You have a couple offensive stats here. Um, but you're going to get a lot of defense. Uh, you, sometimes you'll get a little bit of clarity. Uh, but these are mostly going to help you survive, right? So we got parry chance over here. We got freeze on parry over here. Um, we got some explosion nullification down here with the heat shield. Uh, these are all things that you want to consider, especially after playing a couple of uh, a couple of rounds. What are you dying to, right? Are you dying because you're getting pinched between fire beads? 
right? Or are you um, dying because your your parry chance isn't high enough or your defense isn't high enough? So maybe you have to go with a higher defensive item uh, like this spiked shield or even an extractor, or something that gives you some more defense, right? Um, so next we have our weapons. And again, I'm going to go through these ones a little bit more in depth because this is really important for the early game. So you won't have Icebreaker unless you, un uh, unless you unlocked it. Uh, but between Axe, Halberd, and Poison Dagger, we're just going to ignore Spoon, because Spoon is... <laughs> Spoon's a meme. But uh, between Axe, Halberd, and Poison Dagger, you really can't go wrong with these three. Um, d all depending on how you want to build up. So, like, if you open a chest, and your first option is a Poison Dagger, and, I don't know, you know, a Skirt or something, something that's decent in another class, um... You know, I might not pick that up right away because it takes away it takes away from my health or my attack, right? It gives me a bunch of speed. I mean, that's all right. The the effect is pretty good with the poison, um, but I'm prioritizing getting my stats up in the very beginning, right? I don't really want to sacrifice too much right away. Um, as for these other two, right? If I see one of these, I'm almost gonna I'm gonna pick that up almost over anything else, right? If I get this a little bit, you know, maybe dungeon number two three maybe I'll pick this up afterwards but all in all your your early um, weapons are pretty decent later on in the dungeon you'll see some of these other items um, and you really just have to pay attention to what their effects are because they're all very unique um, and there's a lot of them in the game uh, so you really want to pay attention and kind of build your uh, you know build your, your loadout around some of these effects like having splash damage or having uh, chain damage that's huge for the late game uh, which is why these are gold items uh, but you you want to be aware of that because that can total that can totally change how you approach certain enemies in certain situations so uh, weapons are huge um, and you definitely want to take the time to read through some of these uh, so next are masks masks are all about utility uh, they're their stats are kind of a toss-up usually. You see a lot of negatives thrown in here. You see a lot of, uh, especially a lot of negative clarity. Um, but they all have really, really great uh, effects for the most part across the board. There's really not a single mask besides Insatiable um, that's, you know, overly difficult to try and utilize. Um, I personally like going generalist in the beginning a lot because, uh, I mean, it's just such an easy pickup with the, with nothing but positive stats across the board. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're picking up um, what suits your situation the best. So I like picking up camouflage a lot because I hate the bile bags, um, and this totally negates bile bags. So that's a, you know that's a pretty big deal. Um, Next we have scrolls, so or uh, jars, excuse me. So I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but what I want to, what I want to say is, do not undervalue uh, jars. So if you're given kind of a cruddy decision and you have a jar, like on a on a chest, if you have kind of a cruddy op, if you have cruddy options, but there's a jar there, it doesn't hurt to pick it up. In most cases, it's going to benefit, you, right? Ginseng plus one defense on exit. Mushrooms, plus one health on exit. This is every time you leave a dungeon. Even if you get it from a shop, it still counts. Um, so picking these up can really help you kind of get through the early game um, and even give you some benefits in the later game, right? Uh, when you pick them up, you know, appropriately. Uh, to leave a jar slot empty the entire game is really kind of a waste, unless you're just getting absolute slammers of items throughout the entire course of the dungeon. Uh, but definitely... You know, you want to you want to pick these up when they're available. Uh, necklaces. So for the early game, so a lot of these you're going to have to unlock. And if I'm being honest, th some of the late game necklaces are kind of lackluster. So these gold and purple, they're okay. Uh, trophy amulet is probably my go-to, uh, but they're kind of hard to get. Like choker, bone pearls, rebirth, turbulence. Hungry Sun, Potion Vile, all these you need to unlock. So for the most part, you're just going to have these whites over here. But they're actually pretty good. Um, I usually go with either a Crossed Heart or a Stealth. Uh, crossed Heart being my number one pick, because plus two health gain from potions is massive. Uh, Prismatic is also a great option. Um, even though it takes away your one attack here, you're getting one soul damage to a random creature every time you attack, so you're really not losing uh, this attack stat. 
um, because it's just being dispersed somewhere else, potentially even on the, the enemy that you're attacking in the dungeon, and soul damage is not mitigated, so it's always going to land. Um, but so for the most part, you're going to be dealing with these here. Uh, so, you know, you want to be familiar with these. You want to make sure you're picking up what suits your play style. Um, but definitely don't neglect the necklaces either. Um, relics, I'm not going to get too much into relics right now. Um, relics, you need to be kind of careful because they like to give you effects that aren't necessarily um, something you can capitalize on right away. So, for instance, something like this. This is a secondary stat here. We'll get into stats in a minute. But this this cross this brown cross here is critical damage, and that's a secondary stat, right? Your primaries are attack, HP, clarity, defense, speed. Those are your primaries, and this is one of one of your secondaries. So like you take a look at Bronze Leaf here, it has nothing but secondary stats on there. That's it can be a good pickup, but it's not something that that as a new player you need to be focusing on. You're looking at the primary stats and the effects, right? Solidarity, it's it's just it's a solid pickup right ferocity is just a solid pickup you're getting stats you know exactly what you're getting up front and that's that right visionary great for if you're you know dying to things that you can't see right away right reveals all cards um if you've played the game before you'll know that you can't see all the cards once you enter a room so this kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at um, within a room but all in all they're extremely potent but you need to kind of play around with them a little bit um, and, and really read through what their effects do uh, before you just start picking them up. Because stuff like Fire Frenzy, this can be disastrous. Shuffle Dungeon when an explosive creature dies. If more than one explode, you're going to keep popping around the dungeon left and right, and it can be a disaster. All right, so these are stones. Stones are also very important for the early game. So you got Tiger Stone, which gives you attack and some crit chance depending if you read that there. Uh, you got Crystalline, which is just splash damage, which is huge in this game. Um, and then you have Amber, which is draining uh, creatures' speed every time you hit them. Opalescence is something you need to unlock, so we're going to leave that alone for now. Um, but especially for the early game, these are huge. And I'm putting so much emphasis on the early game because that's where you're going to spend a lot of your time. You're going to lose a lot of runs. And that's something that we just need to kind of put out there right away. You're going to lose a lot. I still lose a lot. Um, but that's the whole point. Ring of Pain is a game meant to be very um, unforgiving and very difficult uh, for new players coming in. But as you learn, as you gain more items, as you unlock more achievements, it gets easier and you, you start to be able to form a play style that's kind of tailored to you. So it's, it's interesting how that works. Um, the next thing we have are books. So books are heavily impactful to every run, um, but not all of them, right? So, for instance, you'll see there's quite a few white ones here, so you have some options, and I don't even think you have to unlock too many of these. You might have to unlock Timeless. I don't even think you do. But anyways, um, my priorities usually go pure uh, Cure or Poison, and then a Shields Up is probably after that. These next three, not a big priority for me. Way to turn, teleport to exit, chaotic healing. If you're using teleport to exit, chances are you're too weak as it is, so it's not really worth using. Way to turn is super situational, and chaotic healing is just a bad item. 75% chance to heal for 4, 25% chance to explode for 5. I'd rather just cure, for th or cure poison and heal 3 every time. Um, but these are into the late game. They stay potent especially like uh, Plague and Soul Cannon. Um, but they're not, you know, the, if you don't have one of these towards the end of the game or even the mid, um, you don't have to worry about it a lot. But in the early game, they make a huge difference. Sometimes I keep Cure all the way through a run just because it's it's just a solid item to pick up. Um, and then f uh, finally here, I think this is the last one. Yep. So these are scrolls, and I treat them just like my books. So you always want to pick them up. You don't want to leave them lying on the ground. It's not worth, uh, you know, leaving them behind, uh, because typically you can either utilize them in the dungeon you're in, uh, or you can pick them up right before you leave, because they they typically appear on the ground and they stay there until you pick them up. So um, 
my priorities here, especially for new players, um, are going to be Shadow Step, Bear Trap, Barrier, and Stone Skin. Um, these four, for me, are just the easiest to use right off the rip, and, uh, and they're pretty straightforward, right? So Guaranteed Stealth on Shadow Step, that's great for being able to get around enemies that you don't have the defense to deal with. Uh, Bear Trap is basically an insta-kill up until, I mean, probably dungeon like six. Um, barrier, you take no damage next turn. That's a great way to get, you, so get yourself out of a sticky situation that you already got yourself into. Um, and Stone Skin, typically you have enough health, especially on you know the, the normal difficulty. You, ha you typically have enough health to, to sacrifice for a defense. And defense is, depending on how much HP you have, defense is more valuable. Um, so that's all of the, the item types. As I said, there's a ton of items and they all have different effects, so you really want to take the time to, one, earn them, but also be reading what they're doing, because uh, they're extremely impactful, um, you know, to how you're going to play, and they can totally change your run. Picking up one item sometimes can totally change how you play. Like, even Hungry Sun, Explosions Heal, Gain No Health from Potions. Your whole game plan just changed. You know what I mean? So, many items like that. Uh, lie within this list, and you do, you want to check them all out and give them, give them their 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 fair play. Because sometimes something looks bad, but once you use it, you're like, wow, that was actually, this is a solid item that I can use in the future. So, um, that's all we're going to cover on items right now, uh, and I'll see you in the next part. Okay, so we're back at the main menu here. Um, we're going to hop into a single candle run. I'm not going to go through an entire run, but I'm really going to analyze the the, uh, excuse me, the beginning of the run um, and talk through some, uh, it's kind of some stats, some item pickups, some strategies, and some tips just for the early game, because this is the most difficult part of the game. Um, and everything that you learn from playing uh, the early portions of the game, why am I losing so many frames here? Um, but everything you lose here, you know what I gotta do? I gotta unpin this. That's better. Um, everything you learn from the early portion of the game applies to the late portion of the game. You just need to, you know, it, it turns into more strategy as opposed to building properly. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna talk about real quick, uh, we're gonna touch on again is stats, right? So. We have three different bars here, basically, and we also have our souls up here. That's not a stat, but I'll talk about that. Um, but we have our health, which is, for all intents and purposes, it's a primary stat. There's some certain items that don't deal with it as if it were a primary stat, but it's what we're going to consider as, as of right now is your health is one of your primary stats. You have attack, defense, speed, clarity. Those are your other prim uh, primary stats for a total of five. And then you have critical chance, dodge chance, and stealth chance, which are all passive kind of uh, secondary stats um, that you gain different ways. You gain some of these, as you can see, there's bonus from clarity, bonus from speed, bonus from speed. You gain some of these through your primary stats as well as your item effects. Okay, so um, these are our base stats to start. So as your dungeon person, right? You just naturally have three attack, two defense, four speed, um, and this clarity comes from our item because remember we start with this on the beginning of every run. Uh, and so there's actually there really is a way to strategize how you're gonna handle this first room because this first room is pretty important. You can do a lot of damage to yourself if you're not paying attention. So if you hover over an enemy, you'll see he's gonna do damage to me there, um, and there's a reason for this. And this is actually perfect that we got these two in front of us. So if we take a look at this magnifying glass, right? Um, this is getting a little in depth, but it's important to understand. So, he had this is a rot hound. Um, typically, in the first room, you'll see rot hounds, gnawlings, and then there, somewhere in here, there's a fire hive. So, the rot hound has four damage with one piercing, one defense, and five attack. So, what does that mean? So, attack his damage. This top portion here is ne is negated by our defense. So whatever your defense value is, you just subtract that from his damage, which would be 2, plus piercing, which means if we don't have defense to match his damage, this is always going to hit us. If we do have defense to match his damage, this gets a, a chance to hit us. Okay, and so he has defense, which works exactly the same way with our, um, 
attack, right? It subtracts from our attack, and then the rest of it um, attacks through. And then our speed is basically how we determine who attacks first. So what we can gather from this scenario is if I attack him, I should do two damage because he has one defense. If he hits me, he's going to hit me for two normal damage and then one from his piercing. And when we do engage, he's always going to hit me first because he has more speed. Right? So let's take a look. So he's going to hit us first. Yes. I hit him for two, which is exactly what I said. He hits us for three. So um, our other enemy here is a Gnawling. Um, and he has very similar stats with a little less speed, so we're naturally faster than him, which is nice and important. Uh, he has less defense, which is important. Um, and he has no piercing damage. So your gnawlings are really kind of your uh, your opportunity to gain some souls without too much damage early on here. So our first option is we need to get to these treasures. So we're going to pass on the, on the left here. Um, and in doing that, we're still going to take a hit because we were spotted. We have a chance to stealth, but we were spotted, so we were hit. So we're going to keep moving over to these items. And here we have a chest that costs nothing, as well as a stat increase that has no penalty to it. And we can tell that because all the arrows are pointing upwards. So we open this chest, um, and I'm going to do my best to stick to items here that, uh, that you would be able to see without having to unlock anything. So I, I don't know all of them off the top of my head. I, I uh, wrote down all the ones from achievements, but you also just get some from playing, so bear with me. However... Our ideal stat bar, based on the enemies that we can encounter right now, is 7 attack, 4 defense, 6 speed, whatever clarity, and enough HP so we're just not dead. So, um, so my goal usually in the first room is to get one of those. So if we, if we run that back through, that's 7, 4, 6. So in this scenario... I could get some HP and some speed, or I could get a defense and kind of an okay effect for the first room. Attacks freeze if you have four or fewer items equipped, um, which is all right. I could reroll this, but I might get items that I don't really want to use, so I'm going to just choose one of these. So um, I personally like to play more defensive, a higher defense build. I don't prioritize speed, um, so I'm going to take this Tierra. Um, so we have three, three, four. We're looking for seven, four, six on these seven attack, four defense. So I'm going to take this stat increase, right? I'm going to increase my defense again. So now I have four defense. So what does that mean for us in here? What do we got over here? All right, that's the fire hive. We don't, in this first room, just leave him alone. So that means we have enough defense to match his attack, so the only thing that's going to come through is his uh, piercing damage. And if you look at our health bar, it only has a 20% chance to hit. So that's pretty important. So we can stealth past him. Stealth basically is giving them an attack. That's the easiest way to think about it. So if I stealth, he's going to try and... The same formula applies. He's going to try and hit me. He only has 20% chance for one. He still hit us. Gnawling, now that we have four defense, he has no piercing damage. So, he can't hit us anymore. You notice if I go to attack him, it doesn't affect our health. And we actually hit him first, so it froze. But if he were to try to attack us, it would say 100% chance to parry zero damage. Um, so now we've made it to our other piece of treasure, which is why we moved back to the right here. Um, and uh, both of these items I think you either have to unlock or... No, I don't think you have to unlock these, but they're no good for us right now. So we're going to move on. Um... Okay, so you may not have Icebreaker yet because that's an item that you need uh, to unlock. Uh, Visionary, you could absolutely run into. Um, in this case, I would normally pick up the Icebreaker because it's giving, getting us closer to those base stats that we want. Um, but we'll take the Visionary for now, and you'll see... Remember, we had some, some cards back here behind this item that were, uh, we couldn't see originally. And now we can see everything in the room. So that can help us uh, kind of plan out our, our, our strategy here. So we know these gnawings can't hurt us anymore because of our defense and because of our effect here. 
And now we have two uh, two enemies that only have a chance one or twenty percent chance to hit us for one. So we know we can we can work through these enemies. And because of this tiara, ooh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Because of this tiara, we can actually freeze them. And once they're frozen, now they can't attack back. So this is actually pretty strong for the early game. Uh, we're gonna pick up our potion now that we're at the very end of the end of the uh, room here, and. It's going to heal us up to full. I was going to say we could attack this guy, but I don't want to get into that right now. The only reason we can attack him is because of this item. Uh, but we're going to continue through. Finders Keepers. So we are going to be given an item. So Timeless, like I said, not a huge fan. But we can fill up the slot because we can just replace it any time we want. As you can see, the... the um, the levels are kind of forming a circle there, or a curve that turn into a circle there. Um, and that's, you know, that's basically telling us how close we are to the end. There's 16 doors, normal doors like this in total. Uh, and there's also special doors, like you can see this one here, that um, have different, all sorts of different um, paths that you can take, which we'll go over in the future as well. Uh, but we have another scroll here, so there's no, or another uh, stat here, so there's no reason not to pick this up. Um, we're going to go with another defense here. Bear Trap, we said that's basically an insta-kill for us. So we'll pick that up. And so now what we're looking at, we can see all the enemies, which is awesome. So we know two things from all these enemies we can see. This guy, next action, action move towards me. So he's going to come around this side. This is a scrounger, so he's trying to move towards the door. But he has a lot of loot, so he's also priority. We got some uh, loot in here. And then we got some hounds and some gnawlings. So my first priority is going to be take down this loot scrounger. So I move towards him. We can only do one damage to him right now because our attack is so low. So that's where this bear trap comes in handy. Now we got some more stats and some more health. So we're going to take a speed here. We're going to meet up with this fire bead. Now fire beads, really all you have to do is just move away. Just give yourself time, and they'll blow themselves up. Um, next, we're going to pick up another defense. Now, at this point, we have decent defense. We have decent speed. We're really low on attack. So my next priority that I'm thinking to myself is we need some attack. Perfect. Crossed Heart. It's a great early game item. You get two health from potions. You get attack and HP. We don't need to reroll. That's the perfect item right now. So now... Kill some of these other enemies. See, he's not hes not um, doing any damage to us because of our parry chance. You can see it on my health bar. 100% with zero damage. So these enemies don't matter at all to us. Um, and now Crystalline will get another defense and an HP with some splash damage. So that's really great because that's doing damage to the enemy behind now. And we actually crit him. So we killed him in one shot. So that was really big for us. Uh, the next thing I want to talk really quick uh, are potions. So never leave potions behind if you can still benefit from them. So for instance here, we healed up the rest of that. We don't need the last one there, um, so we can just leave that behind. Uh, so we're going to go through this door, uh, and we're probably going to get to Dungeon 4 before I cut to the next part. Because this is we kind of just follow the same cadence, right? Loot over here, fire bead, uh, scrounger cr trying to get to the door. So we move towards the fire bead. Okay, now I have to watch. There's another one coming on this side, right? So in this case, I'm actually going to move over the fire bead. Now he's ready to explode. I move away. And we'll probably do the same thing. So now we're close to the fire bead. Move over him. He's ready to explode. There you go. So... That brings me to our next topic. So fire beads are throughout the entire course of the dungeon, and I used to refer to um, a certain type of card I call a cushion card. So for the sake of explaining this, we're going we're gonna to take this out. And can we get to this scrounger? We can, but we don't do a whole lot of damage. So actually, we can attack him. Attack him again. So now we're getting low on HP. <clears throat> on HP. Uh, we're going to attack this dog because we kill him and we do damage at the same time. We're going to heal up. Keep attacking the Scrounger. The scroungers are worth this HP. 
scroungers give us more stats. See, now we have more stats. Now we get more attack. And this is a cursed stat. So at this point in the game, unless I can confirm that I'm going to leave this dungeon with full health, which I won't if I take six damage here, I'm not even going to touch it. Leave it alone for now. All right, I'll take an HP there. Um, oh, what I wanted to talk about. So if I have three items that can attack me, so I have a scroll, a potion, and a item. If I have some some cards that can't attack me right next to each other, let's say this this door right here is a fire bead. These are my cushion cards. So if he's coming from the left and I need to move, right? I move to the right. Now he moves over again. I move over. He moves over again. Cushion cards allow you to move freely throughout the dungeon without any risk of damage um, from physical attacks of an enemy being next to you. So you want to utilize these whenever you see fire beads for sure. Um, our Hermit's Tiara, since we have more than four items, it's no good. So we're going to trade that out um, for a little bit of, a little bit more defense. And we're going to head on through. I knew we were going to run into this. So there are also shops. Shops allow you to buy items uh, at a discounted rate. Um, we're not going to buy either of these right now. We're just going to continue through. Um, there's always a free potion if you can't buy something. And then this will be our last dungeon for this. So, actually, great example. Okay, what do we got? So, if we take a look at this, we have to get away from these guys, right? We have one stat over here, um, but then we're pushed into enemies. Over this way, we got two cards that can't attack us right now. So, we can move away. They're still chasing us. We got more room to move. Still chasing us, ready to explode. And now I move again, they blow each other up, and I haven't taken any damage. If I went the other way, I would have had to potentially take, right, damage from him trying to jump over him. And then I would have been stuck in between enemies and just in a much less comfortable position. Now, I don't even have to worry about it. Um, so just to finish this room out, uh, poison is a very, very potent form of damage. You can see it on my health bar there. It doesn't matter how much defense I have. We're blocking all of his damage, but his poison will always hit us. So early in the game here, you want to try and avoid that. Bane fangs are very dangerous early on. We're going to grab our scroll here. So this is a different type of stat increase. You get uh, plus whatever it says up top to the stat shown, but you lose one in each of these stats here. Right? So it's a net one gain, or a net gain of one, um, and you lose... You lose some stats otherwise. So like for this, it's nice because we sacrifice one defense, which we have a lot of, and we even out with our HP or our uh, attack because our goal is to have basically base 10 stats by around uh, like dungeon level 8-ish. Um, and that's kind of, you know, that's that's where we want to, that's where we'll know if we're b building effectively or not. So as you can see here, because of my attack and my defense, we can kill these guys mostly in one hit without taking almost any damage. Um, now, even though these fire hives are dangerous, you can see how much damage he does to me if I kill him. Oftentimes I leave them behind, but they're really easy to pass. See, only one damage. They don't actually have any attack. They just have the piercing damage here. So they're, they're fine to pass over. I'll take that one health as opposed to going through these two poison enemies. This is just a shuffle card, so it shuffles the whole dungeon. I can click that just to show you. Um, and then we would continue through. I'm not going over the doors right now, because there's a lot involved in that, and that's just that's going to be a whole separate thing. Um, but this basically conclu you know, concludes our early game strats uh, for you know how to survive the early portion of the dungeon. There's a lot to go over. I could get really in-depth with, with it, but that's not my goal for this. I just want to kind of lay the foundation. Uh, but as you can see there, we hopped right in. This is my first attempt. And just following some of those basic rules, um, I have no problem. I'm going into this would most likely be a successful run. Um, because I'm going into the next couple levels pretty strong, uh, good stats, okay items. We've got a nice uh, base for ourselves. So um, that's it for now, and I'll catch you in the next piece. Okay, we are back to the main menu here. Um, I just wanted to kind of leave you off with some food for thought as well as just my final couple tips, um, you know, to get better at playing Ring of Pain um, and having some more success with these runs. 
Um, so before we get into that, the first thing I just want to go into is the specialist update here because it kind of lays out some information that I would have liked to explain but didn't have the opportunity to in the dungeon. Um, but just as far as your stat boosts go, so these are the scrolls that increase and decrease stats. Um, you have three kinds, right? So basic is the ones that we saw with all the arrows pointing up, um, and that increases just one of your primary stats. Um, you get three options, that's why it says one of three, and it increases that stat usually by one to two, depending on where you are in the dungeon. The next is compromise. Um, so as you can see here, choose one, minus one to the other two choices. So we saw this one as well. Uh, this is kind of like you, get, you, you gain that net one, right? Um, but you also lose two in maybe something that you don't need as much or uh, something you have a lot of that you want to kind of trade out for another um, <clears throat> stat. These first two I would recommend picking up almost all, basically all the time in the early, um, in the early portions of the game. Specialized you want to leave until the mid to late game. So choose one of three primary stats to increase a lot, which is usually between four and five, um, minus one to all other stats. So if it's plus four, it's net zero. If it's plus five, it's net one. Um, so this is really for when you have enough stats to where if you lose one and everything else, it you don't really feel it. But it's going to give you a large increase to whatever you're adding it to. So it's just, it's much more, as you can see by the name it's specialized right it's a little bit more of an advanced mechanic to get used to when this update first came out I was killing myself all the time because I kept picking these up thinking oh I get all these stats I gotta pick them up but it was draining me at the same time um, but the only other things I just want to kind of point out here is so this is the specialist update update came out a couple weeks ago new items being added to the game new achievements um, with with uh, you know also items attached to those so Again, this just kind of, you know, uh, encourages you to, to check those achievements out, check out these new items, because every time something is added to the game, it's going to change the way the game plays, and they change the way the game reacts as well. So, you, you know, you, gotta, you definitely want to try and stay on top of this stuff. So, brings me to my final comments. Um, as far as if you're a new player, don't get discouraged. Here's what I got to say. So the first thing is play, play, play. Keep on playing. Um, and I think in the first couple days I had this game, I put like 20 or 25 hours into the game just playing. And a lot of those were losses, but it was fine because I knew I was learning, right? I knew that if I kept playing and unlocking items, eventually I would be able to put start putting together builds that would kind of suit my own play style, right? Personally, I kind of touched on this before, I like to go high attack, high defense. Now that I've learned the usefulness of clarity, high clarity, kind of mid health, and I just dump all my speed. I use speed as what we call a dump stat, uh, which basically means I don't invest anything into speed. I let it go into the negative, I let it stay at zero, whatever. I don't care about speed, because if I can hit hard and not get hit hard, speed doesn't matter it doesn't matter who attacks first um, so keep on playing develop a play style so you know play around with the different stats maybe dump a whole bunch of stats into one and you know see how you like playing um, and then start using the items in the dungeon to enhance that um, my next thing I have here is don't leave anything behind so your potions your scrolls, your books, your treasure, anything you can pick up, especially in the early portion of the game, pick it up. Don't leave it, don't leave uh, um, you know, a stone skin behind. Even if you're not going to use it, just pick it up because you never know. Next, you know, the next dungeon you might get in and you say, oh man, I need defense. Well, now I got it, right? Or this, the guaranteed stealth. Oh, I got to get past this, you know, poison enemy. Perfect. Now you can get past them, no problem. Don't leave anything behind. Um, when you do die, which is going to happen a lot, try to take something from it. Expect to lose. Expect to die, right? But every time you do, ask yourself, all right, what, what, what decisions did I make that led up to that, right? Why did I get pinched in between those fire beats? Why did I 
get hit so hard by that enemy I don't always get hit hard by? Was I low on stats? Did I not pick up, you know, items that were synergizing with each other? Um, you know, all of those... This is really... It's, it's as much as it is kind of like a little RPG slash, you know, roguelike, whatever. It's at, on the, at the baseline. It's a strategy, turn-based, critical thinking game. And really... Excuse me, it, it, that's what it comes down to, is you being able to analyze your situation and make those choices appropriately. If you are making bad choices, you're going to continue to lose, but you can't figure out that those choices are bad until you lose. So, thanks again so much for watching. I hope this helps anybody. I know it was kind of, you know, all over the place. I tried to keep it somewhat structured, uh, but definitely give me your feedback. I want to get more in-depth. Uh, to some of the numbers and some of the dungeon doors and all that kinds of stuff, but this was just a just a you know bare basics, some tips and tricks, some advice, and my only ask is that you just don't stop playing. This game is really really great. It has a lot of great support on Discord and from the developers, um, and they're you know they're constantly putting new stuff in the game. So give it some time, keep running through it. We'll see you in the next one.